Howdy folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. I'm giving you an update on the Hyundai Accent with the 1.6 liter engine. I have the cylinder head off. Now there's not much uh, to get in the cylinder head off. If you watch the previous videos, I show you everything you need to do and everything you need to take off to get to the point to where you can take the cylinder head off. Once you get to that point, what you're gonna need is an extra long eight millimeter hex head socket it needs to be metric it needs to be eight millimeters and it needs to be extra long and then it's just a simple procedure of following uh, a zigzag pattern start in the inside working your way out in order to loosen get the bolts out pull your head off and there you go you're left with your engine block so <clears throat> the reason why i wanted to pull the cylinder head on this is because after diagnosis extensive diagnosis this car constantly misfiring and then sticking a camera scope uh, on the exhaust side to check valves. I highly suspected that we had some burnt exhaust valves, some valves that are carboned up and stuck open. And that's why we could never get it to run right, especially in cylinder number three. So now that I have the cylinder head off, I'm going to go ahead and do what's called a water test. I'm going to show you how that works and it's going to show us whether or not valves are stuck open due to carbon buildup and all that other stuff. All right, so here's our cylinder head. Okay, and as you can see, I've got the camshafts removed. Okay, with the camshafts removed, that should mean that every single valve is completely shut. <clears throat> All right, and so we're going to test the exhaust side first here. And so with the camshafts removed, every single one of those exhaust valves should be airtight shut. <clears throat> All right, now if water can pass through that valve seat then that's going to tell you that that's the bad valve and you're going to mark it and so that way the machine shop or whoever's rebuilding the head knows which ones are bad so here we go Right, I got that all filled up with water, each one. Now we're gonna go here, make sure there's no water dripping down onto our valves. Okay, now you do not expect it to leak if they are going to leak right off the bat. It could take as long as 20, 30 minutes, but bottom line is they are not supposed to leak in any form or fashion. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and set a timer and I'll let you know how long of a time interval we have before they start leaking. Uh, I actually have already done this test so I know which ones are leaking. I'm just redoing it so I can show you guys. Okay, so we it's been about five minutes and there you go. You see that? You see the water? You see the drop forming? It's just ever so slightly forming, very slowly forming. And if you can't see it, just in case, it's right there. Let me see if I can get a light real quick. Right there. And you can see where the drop of water. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that that valve has carbon buildup and it's stuck open. It's not truly closing. Can you see the brightness around it? See how that water travels around there and then drips out? Okay, so if water can drip out of that valve, then so can combustion, so can compression, so can gases. Now I've seen valves that are a lot worse than this where it is just completely gone all the way. And so, Hold on a second, I just dripped some water on here. All right, there we go. So now you can see on that valve where the water can escape. And so if water can pass through that valve seat, then the combustion, the heat, all of that, your compression, that's where that misfire is beginning to happen. Now I've seen them where people have just 
constantly driven them even though it was misfiring and i've seen it to the point to where the valve itself is just completely burnt and gone let's see if there's any other ones okay it looks like maybe this one you can see some water in there okay here's an example of a dry one all right that one's dry okay see that one's dry that one is beginning to leak okay this one is beginning to leak same as that one but again compare it to your dry one hey right, this one is definitely leaking that one seems to be all right looks like this one's wanting to leak too so after about five ten minutes this one's definitely leaking so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wait about another 10 20 minutes just to see if any of these other ones start leaking all right now about another 10 minutes has gone by and again we have a dry valve here I'm trying to get some focus for you so we have a dry valve here that's shut but look at this valve Okay, this is a wet valve. That's the water seeping. That's not a leak. That's actually considered a seep. But if water can seep through that valve, then bottom line is that valve is not shutting correctly. And again, it's going to cause the engine to run. To run not so great. Cylinder number three, we've got a valve that is wet. And cylinder number four, we have a valve that is wet. Okay, so there you go, folks. Now, sometimes you might see them completely dripping down. Sometimes you see them wet. The bottom line is, is if water can get through there, again, I'm going to say it again. If water can get through there, so can combustion and gas and all that other stuff. I say let's flip it over and check the intake and then go ahead and get this thing ready to go back for its core charge because I have a rebuilt cylinder head refurbished ready to go. All right, well, this didn't take long at all. Let's try to get some focus in here. The heck, you don't need to see that? That didn't take long at all. Those intake valves are stuck open. Okay, they're burnt. And again, I've seen them worse than this. I've seen them where they're completely gray and that whole lip around there is just gone. And you see this one is starting to leak. These guys are starting to leak. Looks like Looks like these are the only dry intake valves we have. Well, no, that one has a little water. Starting to come through it there. I don't know if you can see that. So, but I mean, these are just leaking. These are leaking. These are not seeping. Look, 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 look. You see that? So these intake valves are nowhere near shut. And again, that's where you can lose compression. This can cause a slight misfire that after, you know, let's say you've gone through the ringer with it. You've changed spark plugs. You've changed uh, fuel injectors. You've changed gaskets. You've changed, you know, you name it. This right here could be your culprit. You may need to have your valves redone. And the easiest way to do that nowadays is just to go ahead and pick yourself up an already remanufactured cylinder head. I'm not going to test this cylinder head because I guarantee you those valves are not burnt. And I guarantee you those valves are shut. So, so there you go, folks. Uh, this is an old school method. You know, my, my mentors have been in the business, uh, my latest mentor has been in the business for 50 plus years. 
And so, you know, this is kind of an old school way, but it's, it's pretty much a surefire way once you've pulled a cylinder head off to figure out if your valves are stuck open, if, uh, you know, there's something going on there. So, so there you go, folks. Alrighty, well I guess it's time to get uh, started rebuilding this thing. Shouldn't take too long to get it done. I'm pretty excited about getting it done because it's definitely going to run a whole heck of a lot better. Well guys, thanks for coming out and watching my videos, hanging out with me and supporting me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon.com and GoFundMe.com. I got some cool projects going on over there. Um, I think that's about all I have for you now. So this is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, signing off.